Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into tonight's film session. As you can tell, we are continuing our NFL player comparison series for some of the 2020 Georgia signees. Tonight, we'll be breaking down five-star cornerback Keely Ringo, the highest defensive back to ever be rated and signed at the University of Georgia, and we will be comparing him to none other than one of the best to ever do it at the at the cornerback position, and that's Patrick Peterson. As you can tell, the physical measurables are relatively similar for both of these cornerbacks, and I believe their playing styles are relatively similar as well. Going to see some good hips out of both of these guys, the ability to play both cover three and zone, or excuse me, and man-to-man -man coverages. Uh, we'll get into all that in just a second. But before we do, we'd ask you, if you like tonight's film session, if you learned something, if you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up. Please give us a subscription as well. Uh, we do these rather often, at least one, times a, one time a week. Uh, we get into the film and break it down, whatever it is. If you've got any suggestions as well, please Hit them in the comment section. I will do my best to get to those. This was actually a recommendation from one of you guys, one of our viewers. So we appreciate you for doing that. We appreciate you for being here as well. Again, priority number one is we hope you learned something. Priority number two, hope you have a little bit of a good time. Hope you have some fun watching us, uh, or excuse me, watching this film session uh, and all of our film sessions. If you like what you got, uh, we'd appreciate you if you support the website over there at the Bulldog Maven. Uh, you guys will appreciate the work we do in print as well. And follow me on Twitter at Brooks Austin SI. That's enough of the begging. Let's get into the film session. We'll see you on the other side. All right. So this comparison, as most of my comparisons, uh, you know, they don't the high weight speed. They're very comparable, right? Keely just a little bit taller and a little bit more slender. Uh, both extremely fast. Both sub four four runners. But to me, it's it's like most of my comparisons, all of my comparisons. It's all about body movement, right? What do their body patterns look like at their certain position? And at corner, especially as a lockdown man-to-man -man corner, there's nothing more important than how you flip your hips, right? How you drive and flip your hips and work backwards. Let's mute this. Hold on. All right, so you're going to see here, Keeley, look how straight-lined he is as he flips his hips. Watch as he flips this right leg over and drives northward. Watch how the hips flip but the body line stays straight in line with this cone what they're showing you is how fluid his hips right if his hips were tight he would get offline this is an nfl combine drill as well we'll show you clips of uh patrick doing it as well pete doing it as well but you there you see the hip fluidity and a little bit of the ball skills there at the end he had nice soft hands does keely ringo but a little taller a little more slender but exactly what you see right here good back pedal and a good hip turn at the top of this break Coach claps his hands, Keeley flips his hips in a dead straight line. All right, now here's an actual game rep. So wide receiver is going to press on him. Watch Keeley flip his hips. But I want to you, what I want you to really watch is as this right knee drives over and he works backward, watch the amount of ground he gains immediately, right? As soon as he drives that first leg, something we're going to show you with Pete as well here in a second. Right there, boom. And then he immediately is back to top speed. A little bit of hold, but he's right there in the hip of this wide receiver. And it all starts with the flip of the hip and the hip drive right here at the top. Boom. As that right leg crosses over and they get into – he's run mode right now. As this right leg drives, watch the ground he gains immediately. This guy is going forward. He's going back. But watch the smooth transition, boom, right into it, stays in the hip. Again, a little bit of a hold, but we're here to see the hip fluidity, right? How quick they get into their turn and how fast they can accelerate. That's exactly what you're seeing right here. All right, here you have it. Now watch, again, as he crosses over, as he flips direction, watch him drive the opposite knee backwards and watch how quickly he gains ground as he moves backwards. Patrick Peterson, one of the best combines I've ever seen, flawless in every single drill, runs 4-3-4 four, four in the 40. I mean, you see why he was a top-10 pick in the 2011 draft. I mean, but there you see it. As soon as the knee drives over, as soon as that knee drive hits, whoo, look at all the get great – Excuse me, gain, ground he is gaining. Good Lord. Anyways, you see it right there. That's good fluid hips. That's what it's supposed to look like. Again, out of college, uh, Pat Pete, a little bit thicker than Keely Ringo, but he had a little bit of time, right? He came into college at 195. Ringo already heavier out of high school 
at 205, just a little bit taller. But again, there you see the ball skills high point. But this is what we're seeing right here. This is what we're here for. This moment right here where this knee drives over, excuse me, boom, drives over, and they gain ground quickly. Good hip fluidity from both of these guys. This is the other thing I really base my comparison upon. Arizona likes to run a lot of cover three since uh, Patrick Peterson's been there uh, in Arizona. And what you'll see is, uh, just like here in this picture, they look like they're running some type of inverted cover, or excuse me, Tampa 2. This guy will play the middle of the field. These two guys got outside the hash. Um, so kind of middle of the field open, but it's really not because this deep safety and this three safety look is actually really playing like an inverted uh, Tampa 2 middle linebacker. He's already in the middle of the field. But either, either way, teams running zone. Keely at the top is running man-to-man. -man. It's something we'll show you in the next clip. Wide receiver is going to try to run a dig right here. What you're going to see is Ring goes all over him the entire route. And then at the very end, he undercuts it and picks this ball off. Okay? Right there. Good ball skills, right? Getting in there, getting this ball before it hits the turf. Uh, but right in the hip, right? Again, Everybody else running zone. Look at this. Cover three, it looks like, down at the bottom. This guy's got deep thirds, or at least he thinks he does. He's running back into this safety. Nobody really playing. This guy playing curl flat down here at the bottom. Linebacker got middle of the zone. Either way, Keely Ringo matched up in man-to-man -man there at the top of the screen and gets himself a pick. Same exact play we're going to show you here in a second from Patrick Peterson. First off, take a look at the score and the situation. Fourth quarter down seven under four minutes to go cardinals need a big play here we go same similar look right they're not exactly in an exaggerated tampa two but these guys are playing zone okay off coverage outside leverage single high safety in the middle of the field looks like an assemblance of a cover three except patrick peterson has the ability to play both this deep third and man-to-man -man when he needs to so what he's going to do right here is Vincent Jackson. I don't know if you guys remember this, but he used to be a really, really good wide receiver. We're a little bit of the ways back here. We're all the way back in 2013. But he's going to be running the dig, too. And you're going to see Pete stay in his hip the entire time, undercut it late, and pick this ball off and give his football team a chance to score and give him the ball in field position. A threat after the catch. We'll show you that here in a little bit. Uh, but here, here's the deal, right? It's the physicality at the line of scrimmage. They're – you see a little bit of that hip turn we were talking about earlier. Still riding Vincent Jackson, and then boom, stick your foot in the ground, watch the short area of quickness to undercut this route just like we saw with Keeley pick that ball off on that dig. Let's watch it one more time. Everyone else in zone, he's walked up in man-to-man -man coverage because coach trusts him to do this, and boom, undercuts a dig, gets a pick in a high-pressurized situation on the road, gives Arizona the ball back. One question I always have for corners is how well do you defend the slant in man-to-man -man coverage, right? Not exactly walk down in a super highly pressurized press situation here, but he's still in man-to-man -man coverage while everyone else is basically in zone. But here you go. Going to see a slant or what appears to be an attempted slant here. Uh, this this offense that Saguaro is playing right now is going to put two guys in one hole, two wide receivers in one location. But what you're going to see is Keely Ringo be able to ride that slant, right? Be able to run step for step with any wide receiver in the league because he does run a sub 4-4 in the 40. But good, you know, giving a little bit, get, you know, giving a little bit of ground off the line of scrimmage, establishes hands on, boom, right there. And then at this point, it's a running match, right? Match, stay in phase the whole time, play off the back hip if you have to. And then when the ball's in the air, drive through the wide receiver and try to make a play on the football. Um, this is just great stuff right here, right? From at least Ringo's perspective, not so much from the offense, um, but a, a good rep right here showing his heel click, how he drives on the football, and how he recovers late. Same thing here from Patrick Peterson, only difference it's against an NFL wide receiver and Vincent Jackson. But this is this is what's great about Pete, and, and you know, uh, Keely Ringo will get to this point at some point, but see, same kind of leverage and, and, and off man right here, and watch, no hands on, very, very sticky cornerback without holding this is what makes him one of the best to ever do it now he gets a little hand in there for a second but you know a relatively clean rep from pete right here let's take it out of slow-mo and get another look at it jackson running the slant right here hold on lost the clip we'll start in a second anyways jackson wanting the slant right here good job not holding and getting back inside a little bit of a misthrown ball from mike glenn in there 
the long neck giraffe at quarterback. Uh, but anyways, you see him right here in phase the whole time, playing from behind. He would have gotten through the hip of that wide receiver and made a play on this ball. One would presume if it was a good, uh, a well thrown football, which not a lot of them were uh, for Mike Glennon in his career. But there you have it, right? Being able to play man-to-man coverage against the slant. How do you defend the slant? How well do you drive on that ball when playing from behind in your phase? All right, so now Ringo's playing off. As you can see from the sticks, it appears to be, and the empty set for that matter, it appears to be either second and third and a zip code, right? You can't even see the sticks in the camera. Uh, a deep, deep cover three here from Keely Ringo. And what you're going to see is he kind of gets away with being a little bit lazy in his coverage here. You see, not not very much effort here, but he's going to turn it on right when he has to. He's going to carry with number two as he enters his zone. And then this is really what the comp's about. The threat with the ball in his hands after he makes the interception. One of the best running backs in the class, too, honestly. Uh, and this is a guy that's going to score with the football, right? He's going to score when he gets it in his hands, or he's going to try to at least. Good high point of this football here as he runs with number two. Boom, high point the ball, come down with it, and then make a play, right? Make a couple guys miss, outrun another, you know, finish the run with physicality, even switch hands right there. Look at him. This is a guy who's carried the ball before. Boom, switches hands prior to contact, gives that guy a stick, st sets up the block, and then finishes with power. Film cuts out. We'll assume he will score in this situation. And now, again, this is elite stuff, right? This is a guy who is a great, and I mean great, high school back. Probably will never run the football at Georgia. But when he does intercept the ball, he can absolutely do this, right? Can run with a little bit of power, can make guys miss, and absolutely is 100% trying to score the football. Watch the next clip. I guarantee it's him running outside zone of some sorts. Yep, here it is right here. This is just him being the best football player on the field, right? The best athlete, dead legs a guy, and then gets into the end zone. But back to the pick. A lazy man's cover three, right? But he's able to drive with number two, pick this ball off, and make a play after the catch. And again, this is what makes him great. This is what makes Pat Peep great as well. Not just a threat to pick you off and turn you over, but a threat to take it back to the house as well. You want to know how good a man's press man coverage is? Let him go up to Detroit and play press man against Megatron. All right, what they're trying to do here, of course. All righty, anyways, what they're trying to do here at the top of the screen with Megatron, they're trying to run the go, right? But what you're going to see is Pat Pete stays in phase the entire time. So what is Matt Stafford forced to do? He's forced to attempt to throw the back shoulder fade. Now, the only problem is back shoulder fades only work against corners who don't have their eyes in the right spot at all times. And it's not what Patrick Peterson is. So what you're going to see here is he's going to bump and run with Calvin perfectly. But the difference is, watch it in slow-mo. Watch him turn his head around at the top of the route. Boom, heads around right now. He's looking for the ball because he knows it's coming. Picks the ball off, and this is what we're talking about, right, with Keeley and him. A threat after the catch. Look at this dude turn on the Jets now. He gets tackled because this is the NFL. This is the National Football League. These dudes are paid pretty well, too, and they're pretty damn good athletes. But watch it from the tight. Okay, it's kind of hard to see what Pat's doing over here in the corner. Just know he's in bump and run man-to-man -man coverage. Gets his head around, picks the ball off, and boom, he is a threat. With this ball in his hands, outruns that guy, doesn't have a chance, and then cuts back and ends up getting tackled, but that's okay. Let's watch it, watch it one more time again. This is perfect technique, right? Gets hands on, gets eyes in the backfield, good high point of the football, good ball skills, and then boom, make a play after the catch. All right, we saved the show for last. Uh, here's the 40s, right? You're going to see a 4 3 5 here at the opening in Atlanta from Keely Ringo. And then we'll show you the 434 from Pat Pete. I mean, holy smokes, right? I mean, these are laser times too, so this is absolutely 100% legit at a 4353. Um, I mean, flat out ungodly, right? He's won the fastest time at the opening two straight years. Woo wee. That is flat out moving, folks. Take a look at it again. Look at the leg turnover. I mean, right? You don't you don't run a 435 without great leg turnover. But holy smokes, right? Top end speed's incredible. We'll see the same thing from Pat here in a second. Four, three, five, a fish. All right, here we have it. Obviously, Pete, the much bigger athlete at this point after spending three years in the LSU program. 
But look at the get off, head down, head finally rising at about 30 yards. Boom. 4 3 4. I mean, it's flat out moving right here, just like we saw from Keeley. You know, a lot, a lot thicker of an athlete, right? But, you know, same, same similar traits. Out of high school, I would imagine they looked identical. This dude spent some time in the squat rack. Uh, no homo, but check a look at that bubble butt. Uh, yeah, I just said that. Um, this is a dude who's flat out squatting, right? Take a look at this broad jump, okay? You don't do this without some hips, okay? That dude spent some time in the squat rack, young gentleman. Spent some time in the squat rack. It's good for you. Look at the first couple bursts. Man. I mean, again, one of the best combines I've ever seen. This dude can flat out get up and go. Uh, and it's something you see on his tape, right? It's something you see on Keeley's tape as well. Very, 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 very fast individuals here. I don't know if Keeley can get any faster while he's in college. Um, it would be almost impossible. I mean, does he turn it into 428 in a couple of years at the NFL Combine? I would not be shocked, but I would be impressed because he's going to put some weight on in college, you would assume. But there you have it, both identical in their 40 times at least. Again, spend some time in the squat rack. Alrighty, folks, that's our film session for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please show us some support uh, by giving us that thumbs up, giving us that subscription, and go ahead and share it wherever you want to, however you want to. We'd appreciate you for doing that. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter who watches it or how they watch it, as long as they watch it, um, just like you guys did. So if you've got any suggestions for what we might want to do moving forward, please hit those comment sections. You guys know I'm pretty active in those, and I'll try my best uh, to get to whatever suggestion you've got for us. Um, you know, I enjoyed this film session tonight. I think Keeley is going to be one of the better defensive backs to ever go through the University of Georgia, and I would be very, very hard-pressed to imagine that he's not going to be a future, you know, at least top two-round pick, uh, you know, if all goes to hell at Georgia. Even if it doesn't, if he plays half as well as he could, uh, I think he's going to end up being a first-round draft pick because he's going to blow the compound out of the water, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but that is our show for tonight. We appreciate you for showing us some support here, but not only here, over on our website as well at BulldogMaven.com uh, and follow me on Twitter at BrooksAustinSI. If you guys have any suggestions, you know what to do. Hit it in the box. We will see you next time. Hope you had a great day. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.